Physical development refers to the changes in growth, strength, and motor skills that occur from infancy through adulthood. These stages are crucial for understanding how individuals grow and develop physically throughout their lives. Hi guys, welcome to this channel. In this video, we explore the stages of physical development. If you like the content of this video, please like it and subscribe to this channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so you are up to date on all our videos. So let's get into it. Physical development is generally divided into several key stages. Number one, infancy, which is from birth to two years. Rapid growth occurs during this stage and infants develop motor skills like rolling over, sitting up, crawling and walking. Number two, early childhood. This is from two to six years. Children grow steadily and refine motor skills during this stage. They learn to run, jump and use utensils. Number three, middle childhood. This is from six to 12 years. Steady growth continues during this stage. Children gain strength and coordination and puberty may start for some. Number four, adolescence. This is from 12 to 18 years. This stage includes growth spurts, development of secondary sexual characteristics and the final stages of physical maturation. And lastly, we have adulthood, which is 18 years and above. Physical development stabilizes but continues to evolve with aging affecting strength, flexibility and body composition. Let's look at these stages in a little bit more detail. Infancy. Infants develop motor skills in a predictable sequence. For instance, a newborn can only lift their head briefly while lying on their stomach. From 3 to 6 months, they begin to push their arms and roll over from tummy to back. From 6 to 9 months, infants start to sit up without support and may begin to crawl. From 9 to 12 months, they often pull themselves up to stand and may take their first steps while holding onto furniture. This gradual progression helps infants gain control over their muscles and coordination. Early Childhood During early childhood, children experience steady increase in height and weight. For example, a 3-year-old might grow from 2.5 feet to 3.5 feet tall. They improve their ability to run, jump and hop. A 5-year-old can often pedal a tricycle and catch a ball. They also refine skills like drawing, writing and using utensils. For instance, a 4-year-old might be able to draw simple shapes and use a fork and knife. These developments are important for children's independence and participation in activities. Middle Childhood In middle childhood, children continue to grow steadily. For example, a child might gain about 2 inches in height and 4 to 7 pounds in weight each year. They become more adept at complex movements like skipping, throwing and catching. A 9-year-old might excel in team sports like soccer or football. For some, the onset of puberty begins, leading to challenges like growth spurts and the development of secondary sexual characteristics. These changes prepare children for adolescence and adulthood. Adolescence Teens experience rapid height and weight increases. For example, a 14-year-old might grow several inches in just a few months. The hormones released during puberty result in the development of primary and secondary sexual characteristics. The primary sex characteristics include those directly related to reproduction and the secondary sex characteristics include features or signs of achieving sexual maturity. Pubertal changes in boys are marked by acceleration in growth, facial hair and changes in voice. In girls, rapid growth in height usually begins about two years before the onset of menstruation. There is an increased muscle mass in boys and changes in fat distribution in girls. These changes are driven by hormonal shifts and mark the transition from childhood to adulthood. It is normal to have variations in pubertal sequence. For example, among two boys or two girls of the same age, one may complete pubertal sequence before the other has even begun it. Adulthood Physical health is often at its peak in early adulthood. For example, many adults reach the highest levels of strength, endurance and flexibility during this time. In middle adulthood, gradual changes occur such as decreased muscle mass and bone density. For instance, a 50-year-old might notice reduced flexibility and strength. In late adulthood, further changes include reduced strength, flexibility and changes in body composition such as increased fat and decreased muscle mass. 
Maintaining a healthy lifestyle can help manage these age-related changes. Several factors impact physical development. Let's look at these in a little detail. Number one, genetics. Genetics determine growth patterns and body type. For example, a child's height can be influenced by their parents' heights. Some genetic conditions like muscular dystrophy affect physical development. Understanding genetic influences helps predict and manage physical growth and health. Genetic transmission is very complex. Most characteristics that we observe in humans are a combination of a large number of genes. You can imagine the combination produced by 80,000 or more genes, accounting for a variety of characteristics and behaviors. It is also not possible to possess all characteristics made available to us by our genetic structure. The actual genetic material or a person's genetic heritage is known as genotype. However, not all genetic material is apparent or distinctly identifiable in our observable characteristics. Phenotype is the way an individual's genotype is expressed in observable and measurable characteristics. Phenotype includes physical traits such as height, weight, eye and skin color and many of the psychological characteristics such as intelligence, creativity and personality. These observable characteristics of an individual are the result of interaction between a person's inherited traits and the environment. It is the genetic code which predisposes a child to develop in a particular way. Genes provide a distinct blueprint and timetable for the development of an individual. But genes do not exist in isolation and development occurs within the context of an individual's environment. This is what makes each of us a unique person. Number two, nutrition. Nutrition is essential for growth and health. A balanced diet supports proper development at all stages. For instance, adequate calcium intake is crucial for bone health. Proper feeding supports early growth. For example, breast milk or formula provides essential nutrients for an infant's rapid development. Balanced diets in childhood support steady growth and development. For example, iron-rich foods are important for cognitive and physical development. In adulthood, nutrient intake affects overall health and physical performance. Maintaining a balanced diet helps manage weight and prevent chronic diseases. Proper nutrition supports healthy development and well-being. Number three, physical activity. Physical activity encourages muscle development and coordination. Regular exercise helps maintain physical fitness and health throughout life. Number four, health conditions. Chronic illness or conditions can affect physical development. For example, conditions like asthma may impact physical activity levels in children. Physical development influences our cognitive and emotional growth. Developing motor skills allows children to explore and interact with their environment, which supports cognitive learning and problem solving. For example, learning to manipulate objects can enhance cognitive skills like spatial awareness. Physical changes during adolescence can affect body image and self-esteem. Positive self-perception and healthy development contribute to emotional well-being. Understanding this connection helps support holistic development. In conclusion, understanding the stages of physical development helps us appreciate the complex process of growth and changes from infancy to adulthood. By considering these factors and milestones, we can better support healthy physical, cognitive and emotional development throughout life. So that's it for this video. If you are looking for quality mental health worksheets and resources, please visit my Etsy shop. The link is provided in the description box below. Once again, if you like the content of this video, please like it and subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon so you're notified when the next video comes out. As always, thanks for watching.